Did you know that Romans used date pits to make lotions for their eyebrows? And the ancient Greek word for date was Phoenix because it was originally thought that dates originated in Phoenicia. Also, in recent years in Israel, a 2,000-year-old date seed was excavated from the Masada and it was successfully germinated and it is now a growing date palm tree. So stick around for some more information and grab your apron because it's date night on the old school kitchen. Welcome back everyone, I'm Feral Monaco and it's date night in the old school kitchen. But don't worry, I'm not talking about courting here and I'm not gonna ask you to comb your hair or put on a nice shirt. We're actually talking about the fruit of the date palm tree, the date, because this fruit has actually been an integral part of the Mediterranean food culture for thousands and thousands of years. In fact, date palm trees are so old, it's difficult to trace the exact origins of the tree. But some of the most beautiful archeological evidence of dates have been found in Egypt, dating to the 14th century BC on a tomb painting that depicts palm dates ready to be harvested. You'll notice the date trees along the bottom of the painting, burdened with plump dates ready to be picked. In Iraq, or ancient Mesopotamia, dating to 7th century BC, on a bas-relief sculpture depicting a military campaign. Here, you'll notice three towering date trees boasting bunches of dates hanging down from the growing point at the top of the trunk. In Pompeii, Italy, dating to the first century AD, in a desiccated and carbonized form, perfectly preserved during the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. These dates may look small to our eye, but it's simply due to the fact that all moisture was lost in the intense heat of the Vesuvian eruption, shrinking the dates during the carbonization process. And in Herculaneum, Italy, dating to the first century AD, on a fresco depicting dates alongside two coupled figs and two dried figs. You'll notice two coins sitting atop the two dates in the center of the image. One is silver and one is gold. The Roman poet Martial tells us that a golden date is offered by clients to the wealthy patrons on the calends of January, which is the beginning of the new year. Now dates in the classical Mediterranean were a little bit of a treat. They were definitely a part of the Roman diet, but they were a bit of a high status item as they were imported from other regions such as Syria, Judea, Egypt. So they weren't necessarily a staple in the Roman diet in the same manner that say cereal grains or leggings were. Carbonized dates were excavated at Pompeii and Herculaneum, but in small enough quantities to indicate that they weren't nearly as common in the daily Roman diet as other native fruit were. Archaeological evidence tells us that dates are often pictured as offerings to deities in Roman art, and dates as offerings were also excavated at the Temple of Isis at Pompeii. This notion of dates as a luxury food is attested to by the first century Roman gourmand Marcus Gavius Apicius in his cookbook entitled De Recoquinaria. Apicius writes about a date-based dish called dulcia domestica, or homemade sweets, in his cookbook which is thought to have been drafted in the first century AD. This dish is comprised of dates stuffed with nuts or pine nuts and dressed or stewed in honey, salt, and pepper. And now the time has finally arrived to explore what all this ancient hype about the Phoenix Dactylifera is all about. We are now going to make Apicius' recipe for stuffed dates called dulcia domestica. And so while I'm preparing a batch for myself, I'm actually going to teach you how to make it at home. So get a pad of paper and a pen. Here's the ingredients that you're going to need. Are you ready? Let's make dulce domestica. So the first step in the process is we are going to take our dates and we're gonna split them into three groups of 10. And while we're doing so, 
why not let you in on a little secret? You know, it isn't just archaeology that tells us about dates in the ancient Mediterranean. We can refer to ancient literary sources as well. In the first century AD, Roman poet Publius Papinius Statius tells us of sweets raining down on the crowds during the public games of Saturnalia. And among those sweets were grape musk cakes and stuffed dates. So the next step in the process is to stuff every single one of our undressed dates and you're going to do it like so. If you look at the bottom of the date, you're going to see a small hole where the pit of the date was originally extracted. So taking your almond or your pine nuts, whichever you're choosing to use, insert it into the base of the date in the hole, give it a tiny little push, and then you can pinch it shut and make sure that you do this with every single one of your 30 dates. Oh, and here's another really interesting literary reference. In the first century AD, Roman poet Aulus Perseus Flaccus tells us that some Romans originally perceived dates to be a little bit of a luxury food when they were first being imported into Rome. A character named Bestius tells us that dates turned even the simplest of palates towards the extravagant. Next, we're gonna dress our dates, but the first thing you wanna do is take 10 undressed stuffed dates and set them aside because we're actually gonna serve those plain. So what you're going to do then is you take the remaining two batches of 10 dates, 10 of them are going to be dressed with sesame seeds, the other 10 are going to be dressed with cracked pepper. So to dress the dates, take your first batch of 10 and roll each stuffed date in honey. Make sure that the surface of the date is adequately coated, but not excessively so. Lift it up and let some of the honey come off, give it a little bit of a shake and then move it into the bowl of cracked black pepper. Give it a nice roll and make sure that the entire surface of the date is coated. You are not going to regret this, trust me. And while we're dressing our dates in cracked black pepper, now might be a great time to tell you about what Josephus had to say about dates. In the first century AD, Roman Jewish historian Flavius Josephus tells us that the best quality of dates in the Mediterranean Came from Jericho. Josephus also tells us about food stores found at Masada following the Roman siege of the fortified settlement in 74 AD. The hilltop fortress built by King Herod contained an abundance of wine and oil, every variety of pulse, and piles of dates. Now that reference from Flavius Josephus is actually really important because what it does is it allows us to connect an ancient historical reference to modern developments with respect to the date palm tree known as the Phoenix Dactylepera. Check this out. This is the story of Methuselah, a date palm tree that was named after the longest living person in the Bible. Methuselah is growing in a modern kibbutz in Israel and was germinated from a 2,000 year old date palm seed that was excavated from Masada. The seed was deposited at the fortress sometime prior to 74 AD when the Romans laid siege on the settlement. What's special about this date palm tree is that scientists at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem didn't know if they could successfully germinate a date palm seed that was 2,000 years old. After all, it had been lying around in the Judean desert for a very long time. But they tried just the same, and it turns out that the seeds of the Phoenix Dactylifera, which is the scientific name for this date palm tree, can withstand heat, dryness, and the test of time. In the end, all it took was some soil and water, and the 2,000-year-old Phoenix Dactylifera rose once again. Isn't that just amazing? How incredible is that? All I can say is, I sincerely hope that at some point in the future, I'll be able to taste one of Methuselah's dates. So speaking of dates, let's finish up our dish here today. So I have chosen to do a single service plate for each one of my dates. There's three dates on each plate and I'm going to crown my dress dates with one of the plain dates. I'm just gonna put it on top like so. And then I'm going to garnish it. If you'd like, garnish the dates a little bit with a gentle sprinkling of cracked pepper or some sea salt to taste. Experiment with some color and a hint of floral scent and flavor by garnishing with a little bit of lavender or rosebuds. Feel free to add a slice of sharp or mild cheese to balance some of the flavors.
Lastly, you can plate and present your dates in any fashion that you choose. You may choose to individually plate a selection of the three date varieties as single servings, or you can choose to serve each variety on one large plate for family style service. Here are some other ideas for presentation and plating. Zippy. These are amazing. What do you think? Have you tried yours yet? Which one is your favorite? My favorite, to be honest, are the dates that are rolled in cracked black pepper. You know, the Romans were never bashful about incorporating cracked black pepper or garum, which is fermented fish sauce, into their sweets and their desserts. I know, it sounds strange, doesn't it? But it's actually quite beautiful. Now, before I polish off the rest of my dates, I actually want to lift a glass to you, my friend, to thank you for watching and for cooking along with me today in the old school kitchen. I think I actually want to toast archaeologists as well, who for hundreds of years have taught us about food in the ancient Mediterranean. And last but certainly not least, let's raise a glass together to Methuselah, the Phoenix Dactylifera date palm tree, who for 2,000 years, lying dormant in the Judean desert, has risen once again.